Hey everybody, Sean here from BoardParacord.com. Today I want to show you how to make a very simple dog collar. Um, this is only going to be maybe 9-10 inch long, but for every inch that you want for your dog collar, you're going to need a foot of paracord. So if you need a 14 inch collar, you need 14 feet. That's the real basic way for this, this style, this weave. It's the most basic way to understand that length. So. For every inch of dog collar, you need a foot of paracord. Real easy. So the first thing I want to do, I have, I think about 10 feet of neon yellow here. And uh, all I'm doing here is I've flattened both ends with a little bit of heat from the lighter and then a pair of um, uh, needle nose pliers. Just clamp those down, flatten the ends so they fit through the buckle real nice. Um, put the ends together like this and then pull all your excess through your fingers and this is going to find your center point and that's your center point there and what I like to do is take the center point right through the top of your buckle pull it through like that see that there and then you're just going to open this loop up and pull it up over your buckle and pull on the buckle and that gives you your cow's hitch that's how you attach your paracord to one end of your buckle. Now, I want to show you this real quick. For small dogs, you're going to want to use a half inch buckle, which is this one on the left. From there, you move up to the three quarter, which allows you to put two cow's hitches on there. So there's other designs you can do. This is called the cow's hitch, this knot right here. It allows you to put two cow's hitches on that one. That's for a medium sized dog up to a large dog. And then we move to a one inch buckle. This one, you can do it, but you gotta be, you really gotta squeeze them in there. You can get three cow hitches on there, which opens up another door to different possibilities of designs. We're not gonna do that today though. Get that out of the way. You're also gonna need a D ring. This is the three quarter inch size D ring. It's perfect size for this, this size uh, dog collar. All right, so once you get your, your um, your cow's hitch on one end, you're just going to flip your buckle over, again pull the paracord through, and then we're going to flip the buckle back over, and from the back side of the buckle, you're going to come up through to the top of the buckle, just like that, and pull all your excess through, and then open your buckle. So you're going to end up with a loop here, you're actually going to have two loops, just like that. So we just open the buckle. You got your male end down here. I guess you could have the female end here too, either way. Now what I like to do is get this set up just like this. You have one end up here where your cords are coming up through, your other end down here. And you want to make your measurement here at this point. And if I had my tape measure, I would do that. But I don't see my tape measure. So we're just gonna kind of guess on this one. Hopefully I don't go too long. This is gonna be a real small dog collar. I just wanted to give you give you the idea and then you can run with it. So, there's not a whole lot different than uh, doing just a regular bracelet. All you're really doing is making it a little longer and we're gonna add the D-ring in just a little ways after the buckle. So, once you figure out your length, you wanna have the right cord that's coming up. You wanna have that going off to your right side. The left cord that's coming up through the buckle off to the left. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to lock the cord onto this buckle, just like we did down here a little bit. So you're going to create a loop on the right side with the right cord. It's going to travel over top. Let me zoom in on this just a little bit for you. It's going to travel over the center two strands and off to the left side. Now your left cord is going to cross over top of that, that first cord you're going to go around the back, so you're going behind these two center cords here, so it's coming behind, and then up through the loop that you created on the right. And you're just going to tighten this down, and just keep on pulling it. And what I'm doing here is I'm kind of holding on to the center strands so they don't move, and then just tightening this up. Another way you can do it is hold on to the center strands like this, and kind of cinch it up toward the buckle and then hold it right there and then pull these ends tight and you'll know when you get it on there because you won't be able to pull it anymore so we're pretty much locked on there so we started with the right side going first 
So now we want to start with the left side. It's going to alternate each time. Every tie that you do, the starting cord is going to alternate right, left, right, left, right, left, the whole way. So one way that you can tell which side, like if you walk away and come back and you, you forgot where you're at, just look to see what was the last cord that went over your center strands and where did it go. So we can see that this cord went off to the left. That means that that cord is going over the top because this cord is going to go over the top every time. Nowhere on this design will this cord ever go onto the back side. So create that loop on the left, cross over with the right cord, go behind the back of the two cords, and up through the loop on the left. And we know that this was our last cord and it came off to the right, so we're going to start with the right this time. Loop on the right, cross over with the left, go behind the back, and up through the loop. And you're just going to do this a few times. Left side started this time, cross over, around the back, through the loop. And once you get going with these, you'll be able to knock these out real quick. Sometimes you can even do this while you're watching TV. You don't even have to look down on this design. This is a pretty, pretty easy design. Probably the most basic design out there. And I would say when you get about two, two to three inches past the buckle, that's where I like to put the, the D-ring. doesn't mean you have to do it, but I like to put the D-ring right there. So that's close to the buckle, and it's not seen really too much when the dog's just kind of not on the leash. The D-ring and the buckle, they tend to fall down to the bottom of the neck, and that way you don't see it. Um, so after this one here, I'm going to show you how to put the D-ring on there. I'm going to back up just a little bit so I know I'm in the frame. Sorry about that. And what you want to do here is this D-ring is basically going to fit on there like this and it'll be able to move like that. So every time that this cord comes over the top we're going to feed it through the D-ring and you're going to do this three times. Okay, so you got your loop there. Now the first couple are kind of hard to keep it in place but you just create your loop and that one uh, goes through the D-ring there. Cross over, under, just like you normally do, and through the loop. The one that goes behind the back, do not take it through the D-ring. Okay, so there's your first one. And now you can kind of move that into place. Now, the one that goes over top again, you're going to feed it through the D-ring. You might have to pull it back like I have to here. Create your loop. Cross over, under, and through. And my video is about to cut out. i got about 30 seconds here. So that was number two. We're going to do it one more time here. I'm working against the clock before my uh, memory card's full here. <laughs> Cross over, go around the back, and up through the loop. And you could actually probably get four of them in here if you, if you really wanted to. I think I'm good with three, though. Um, so you do three, get your D-ring all set up in there, and then you just continue going. Well, I'm going to finish this up and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm at the end of this now, and this is about the size of a bracelet, but it's more just to let you know how to do it. Um, this would, I mean, this would be a real small lap dog. Um, I didn't really intend it to be that small, but I just wanted to basically give you enough information to make your own. Now, I would point out at this point, before you go cutting and burning your ends here, Put it on the dog if you if you have access to the dog. Put it on the dog. Make sure that it's it's snug, that it won't slide off, because once you cut these, you won't be able to go back. And another thing, you you may have to go back the first time that you make one of these, just so that you can figure out what size that your dog needs. You're gonna you might have to make this a couple times so that you get the length exactly right. But once you find that length, <laughs> mark it somewhere you know get a piece of wood put little notches on the wood so you know exactly how long it needs to be because you never know what could happen to to the collar so have kind of a backup to that 
and then you can go by that and you would know exactly the right size every time you make one and you won't have to go through the process of guessing again um, I have just enough room to do one more here um, so I have um, plenty of cord left here so we'll get that off there I'm gonna snip my ends There's one and <laughs> I actually gave my smoothing tool to one of my customers the other day, so I don't have a smoothing tool here. That's okay, I can use the back of the slider. I'm um, just going to melt down the, that, that edge there. And this doesn't work too good as a smoothing tool because it's kind of got like a matte finish to it. It didn't do a bad job though. Alright, we'll cut this off. Get that out of the way and do the same on this side. I gotta be really careful with this uh, lighter because I can't see the flame with all these lights that I use in the videos. So I gotta be really careful not to burn the cord. Anyways, there it is. Um, I hope you took something from this video. Um, I should have done it a little bit bigger so that you have a better idea because I could literally fit this on my wrist, I think. Um, but in general, that's that's how you do it. Just remember, one foot of bracelet. so. Like in this case, I would say that that's probably from here, from this ledge here, over to this edge of the buckle. I would say that's about eight inch, seven eight inches, which roughly means that I use seven to eight feet of paracord. So just keep that in mind when you're cutting your paracord. I always like to go a little long just in case, especially if you're still guessing at what size to make the collar. All right, well that's it. Um, Go over to Facebook and check out the uh, group where everybody posts their projects at. It's facebook.com slash groups slash paracord on. And I hope to see you in there. Until next time, paracord on.